Welcome back to the channel. I hope you enjoy. I used to work in a paper factory. There were dark places where no one went. Factory work sucks. Anyone who's worked in a factory will tell you that. It's a boring, thankless job that no one really wants. The boss is there to get the quota out and that's it. You might say he's concerned for your safety, but it's a lie. I used to work in a factory where they made paper products. I'm not talking about paper cups or plates, I'm talking about standardized tests and voting forms. We did a lot of government work. The boring kind. However, we didn't get government pay. Management treated us like mushrooms. They fed us crap and kept us in the dark. What they did do was overwork us and foster mistrust among employees. Being on your feet for 12 hours a night was bad enough in itself. Breaks were a joke. We'd get two 10-minute breaks and a 20-minute lunch. The problem was the break room was at the front of the plant. If you were unlucky enough to be working at the back of the plant, like me, you had to walk nearly a quarter mile to get to the break room. Of course, they didn't allow you walking time. Your break started and ended at a specific time, no matter where you were, no matter how tired you were, no matter how much your feet hurt. When the break was over, you better damn well be back at your station. What made things even worse was when the machine operator was a suck-up and ran the machine as fast as she could, with zero consideration for the people on her line that had to keep up. We didn't dare complain though, or she would just work us through the breaks. She just refused to stop the machine. Believe me, I've fallen victim to a narcissistic terrorism before. But how could she get away with that, you say? When one of her best friends happened to be one of the shift supervisors and believed every lie, I mean every word she said, it wasn't too much of a stretch to say she could do whatever she damn well pleased. There was a clear class distinction at that factory. The upstairs people, management, who rarely designed, sorry, deigned to go slumming on the factory floor to see how the factory really worked. And then there was the rest of us, the poor slobs who lurched in to work every night and limped out every morning. I used to compare us to the Morlocks and the Eloi from the time machine. They, the Eloi, were the clueless upper world dwellers who lived a perfect life free of any kind of problems. We, the Morlocks, were the creatures they kept in the dark working endlessly to keep their perfect world running. I just wish the comparison wouldn't have ended there. I would gladly pick up a few of the upper dwellers for a permanent trip to the underworld. But I digress. Yes, factory work sucked, unless you had one of the golden jobs that got you off your feet. These jobs were forklift drivers. Many times I looked on in envy at the forklift drivers who would sit on their lift waiting for us, the actual workers, to fill a pallet with whatever product we were making so they could swoop in and take it away to the trucks or the shelves or wherever they took it to. So naturally, the day I found out I was being made a forklift driver was the happiest day in my factory career. It didn't even compare. The forklift job was so much better and easier than the slave labor of working on a machine. I came in, got my coffee, and went to my little driver's shack back in the corner of the plant where things were relatively quiet. Then checked my forklift to make sure I had a full battery and off I went zipping around as happy as a kid with a new toy. For months I was flying on cloud nine, happy to come to work for the first time in a long time. I didn't think I could ever be unhappy in that job. Man was I wrong. It happened one day when we were running a booklet we hadn't run in a long time. There were huge rolls of paper that weigh upwards of a ten, of a ton, my bad, that were stacked one on top of another in towers that reached all the way to the ceiling. Unfortunately, since this was a seldom used paper, it was all the way to the bottom. 
so I had to unstack all the rest of the rolls and put them somewhere so I could get to the one I needed. This not only took a while, but we also happened to be extremely busy that night. The day shift had let us, left us with a mess to work out, and I was busier than a termite in a sawmill. So the machine that couldn't run until I unstacked the paper kept calling me, asking when it would be there. In the meantime, every other machine needed tending as well. It was not a good night. Of course, when you're rushing, you're more prone to make mistakes. I misread one number and brought the wrong booklets to the machine that happened to be run by the evil suck-up operator. Once she started running the books, she realized they were the wrong ones, and instead of working to fix the problem, she wanted to scream at me that I was making her fall behind. I was making everyone else fall behind by tending to her problem, but she didn't care about that. I worked through both of my breaks trying to catch up, but nobody seemed to care. Once all the little whiners were happy, I went back to unstacking the paper rolls. When I finally got to the bottom roll, I noticed something strange. There was a place that seemed unnaturally dark. Don't get me wrong, when you're dealing with towers of paper rolls that stretch to the ceiling, there are plenty of times when they block out the light. The entire area where the rolls were stacked was darker for that reason. Where I had unstacked was directly beneath a light, but at the bottom it was still dark and there was no earthly reason why. I got off my forklift and grabbed a flashlight. I approached the cloud of darkness, curiously but cautiously. I shone the flashlight into it, but the light disappeared. It was like it just sucked the light out of the air. I stepped to the side, and I could see behind the cloud. I stepped to the other side, and the same thing happened. I took a step closer to the strange phenomenon. I held the flashlight closer to the edge of it. As I did, the light disappeared. I pulled the flashlight back to make sure it was still on, and it was. I extended the light into the darkness again. This time, the flashlight went all the way in, including my hand. The air felt cool, but not cold. My curiosity overwhelmed my common sense, and I let my arm slide further in. It felt like empty air. There were no obstructions, and nothing touched my hand. For some reason, I felt drawn in further, like I had to know what this was. I stepped into the cloud. As soon as I did, my vision went dark. I couldn't even see the light from the flashlight. I panicked for a moment, but felt pulled further into the darkness. And then I was through. I was on the other side. I looked around and found myself still in the factory. I was where the paper rolls were stacked. I was basically in the same place, except it was different. The lights were dimmer, and they had a reddish hue. It cast everything in an eerie red glow. I wondered if we had lost power and the emergency lights were on. I stepped forward and looked around. Many things seemed the same, but there was no sound. No machines running. That's the end of part one. Thanks for taking the time to listen to one of my videos. I'll catch you in the next one. Ciao.